First, we're going to go over this idea of real scale and um, how to make materials appear consistently scaled. I talked about it a little bit in class, but I think I'll just do a little demo here for you. So let's decide that we're going to make this wall um, into a plywood kind of material. And you can see over in properties that this wall is on a layer called wall panels. So what I'll do is try to get a plywood material assigned to wall panels. So to assign a material, I just click that button. And I can either do it this way, click that button, hit plug in, um, and then go up to Maxwell Plugin Window Scene Manager and pick a material. But you see I don't have any here. So real quick, I'm just going to go over again the uh, downloading of materials from the Maxwell site. So what you do is open up your browser and go to resources.maxwellrender.com. You need to create an account. It's a very easy thing to do. And it won't take quite a moment. And you click on materials. And uh, I'm going to go here and type plywood and see what comes up. Um, I think I'm going to grab this guy down here, which is just generically called plywood. Hit download. And what will happen is it will download a zip file. Uh, and you'll open that up. And inside that zip file, you'll see there's a MXM and there's I would preview and then these two texture files. So what you need to do every time you download a material is just move it to your material library. Then you move the MXMs to the MXMs in the library and the image files to the textures in the library. So the library is by default in the same place for all of us. Um, and that is uh, in program files next limit Maxwell to and material database. So I'm just going to drag that plywood MXM into MXM files and I'm going to take all these textures and drag them into the textures. And now they should show up in the database. The way to check where your database is set up and to add additional databases if, if that one spot wasn't enough or if you had some other way of organizing things I would, by default, use the default, but if you wanted to set up another way, here in the Scene Manager in Rhino, you'll find uh, a little folder icon. Oh, I'm sorry, it's going to be the checkmark icon. And uh, in that checkmark icon, you see it says Search Paths. And you see Textures folder, Program Files, Next Limit, Maxwell 2 Materials, Database Textures, where we just were. And then I have a second textures folder that looks at desktop download materials. So you guys could set it up however you wanted, but it's nice to keep them all together because uh, you're likely to accidentally delete something along the way if they're in different spots. So now I put that plywood material in there, but I still have no materials in my scene, so I have to go into the uh, Maxwell top menu and then plug in Windows Database Manager and uh, by default again, that same spot, Program Files, Next Limit, Maxwell 2, Materials Database, MXM Files, and in there you see now I have plywood. So I'm going to take that plywood and drag it into my scene manager. And so these are my scene materials. And now when I double click on that, it opens up the material editor and I can check, as we've discussed, you know, there's the material and then within the material there's texture maps. So I can check all these layers in the material and say, okay, you know, there's the right texture map. There's the texture map for bump. Uh, a couple of you guys asked me what bump was. Bump is just simply, um, it doesn't actually create additional geometry on the surface, but it sort of gives a reflection that responds to, in this case, like the grooves and the sort of very slight relief that plywood would have. Uh, because of the wood texture, instead of just being like a totally flat thing with a picture of wood on it, it tries to emulate the texture of wood. Um, 
it's relatively um, light on on the rendering, so it's worth having those bump maps on there if, they, if they're available. So okay, I have this plywood, and I'm going to take it and I'm going to drag it over to wall panels and just put it right on that dot. Um, a couple of you weren't seeing uh, materials in your scene, and it was just simply because you didn't have uh, rendered selected as your display mode. So make sure you have rendered selected, and then you should be able to see it. I have a uh, version of rendered called rendered light black edge. It's just a kind of brighter version, mostly because my monitor is incredibly dark. If it comes in black and white, it just means that it's previewing whatever texture within the material you last selected. So I had this guy selected, this bump map selected. So if I select the reflect in zero, now I get the brown. Okay, so now here comes the important part about real scale. To turn on real scale, you'll see uh, there's a little M underneath the image of any texture map within your material. So if you hover over the M, you see a little window pops that says real scale. So you hold down shift and control and then click that M and it'll turn all the textures in your file into these real scale textures. If you just hit the M, then it'll just do the one that's immediately selected. So, for instance, it wouldn't update the raftus map and the bump map. Um, so, shifting control and hit that M. And now, this uh, image, you notice that it's a square. It represents a one meter by one meter square of material. So, we can see it here. And actually, for me, that works pretty well. But, you know, if I wanted this to represent a uh, half meter, then I would simply go in here and do 0.5 and 0.5 and now you notice that it's it's more dense. The patterning is more dense. If I wanted it to represent 2 meters, obviously conversely do 2 and 2. So I'm just going to go with 1 and 1. Uh, the important thing to remember is that if you change any of these tilings, you want to hold down again shift and control and you know press up or down to change it and then you'll notice that it'll change it for all of them so if I click on this other wood texture it's again 1.1 hold down shift and control and hit minus and then go back to the bump this one's back to 1 2 so that's important that shift and control thing is important I know that a lot of the trouble you guys had was with different layers of the uh, rendering material, different texture maps being tiled differently, and so it produced really weird kind of psychedelic results. So I have that I have the wood on that wall, but I want to let's say rotate the texture so the wood grain is going in the other direction. So this is uh, also was also a struggle for a lot of you guys. Um, just simply select the object that you want to rotate. So you know, it's my selection color is pink, um, but I have this wall selected. And then in the properties menu, the normal uh, Rhino properties menu, you'll notice that you have a little icon that says max wall. So click on that guy. And you should see a little preview there just to confirm, yes, indeed, that is the material that it should be. And then beneath it, there is a X and Y and Z Tech, real scale textual, texture control button. Now these buttons only work with real scale, but basically you should be using real scale all the time, so they should work all the time. If you hit that button, then it rotates it. So then you can see that it's rotating, and now the grain is going in the other direction. Um, so this is useful. Um, these happen to already be rotated in the right way. The grain is going long with the louver, but um, you know, if for some reason I wanted them to have a different orientation, I would just hit that and, and rotate them like that. So it gives you some per object control without having to create a bunch of independent materials. And that's that's basically the idea of that little button. I'm going to stop this movie now and make another little one about lights.